Lecture 4, Basic Descriptive Statistics, Measures of Central Tendency. So when using descriptive statistics, we are usually conducting what we call univariate analysis. That is analysis of one variable at a time, so describing the characteristics of each particular variable. Last lecture, we had a look at measures of distribution, and this series of slides is going to have a look at measures of central tendency. Now what do we mean by measures of central tendency? Well, a measure of central tendency is an attempt to quantify the location of the middle or the centre of the data. So what the typical or average score or result of a data set is. So what we're really trying to do is we're trying to identify a value, a typical value, that best summarises the distribution of values within a particular variable. Now there are three main different ways that we go about trying to measure the centre point of a data set and that is through the mean, the mode and the median. Now the mode is quite simply the most frequently occurring value or category within a data set. The median is when you arrange your data set in rank order so from 0 to 100 um, or however high or low your data goes and you find the middle value or the 50th percentile. The mean, we're looking here at the arithmetic mean, um, it's often noted and people often recognize it as simply being called the average. That is the sum of all the values in the distribution divided by the number of cases. So if you had 10 people within your within your sample and you asked them all of their, you asked each person their age, it would be all of those 10 ages added up together and then divided by 10, your total number of people in the sample, and that would give you the average age for that sample. Now the choice of which of these measures of central tendency to use, the, which we actually use to describe a particular variable, is completely dependent on the level of measurement of that variable. So this is back to understanding whether our variable is nominal, ordinal, interval or ratio, as we had a talk about in the second lecture, types of data. Now if we look at um, each of those particular measures of central tendency in a little bit more detail. The mean, or what we call the average, as we said, is the sum of all the variables in a distribution divided by the number of cases, or what we call the average. So in this example here you can see we have the weekly income of five different people, so from uh, 180 all the way up to 380. Using the formula that you see there, all we're simply doing is adding up all of those incomes and dividing it by 5, which gives us an average income of 276. If we use this exact same example, but we try and find the median, what we're looking at here is finding the midpoint in the distribution when we arrange our data in either ascending or descending order. So if we arrange our data in ascending order, as you can see here, from 180 up to 380 pounds, the midpoint in that is 280, so the middle value, we've got five values, so it's going to be the one in the middle, which is 280 pounds. If we're looking at a data set where, we'd, where we have an even number of observations rather than an odd number of observations, as on the other slide, the median is going to be the average of those two middle values. So if we look at this example here where we have the median, we have the uh, weekly income of six different people, so 180, 220, 280, 300, 320 and 380 pounds, the middle is going to be somewhere between 280 and 300 pounds. The midpoint between that is 280 plus 300, divide that by 2, and that gives you 290 pounds. So the median value for this particular case of six people is 290 pounds. Now the median, it's useful to note this point, is sometimes used instead of the mean, and that is to negate against extreme values. And we're going to talk about extreme values in the next lecture and why it's important to understand whether you have extreme values or not and how this will affect your average. 
Now the mode, if we look at this particular example of weekly income of 10 people, the mode is the most frequently occurring variable in that particular data set. So for example, in this one, we can see that of all the different figures that people have put down, 280 is the value that occurs most frequently. This occurs in three of the 10 cases, and so the mode is 280. Every other value that we can see that occurs either only once or twice. On the subject of modes, you can also have what we call bimodal and multimodal distributions. Bimodal distributions are where we have very we have two very pronounced views or patterns in a response. So they are the two most frequently occurring values um, in a data set. So perhaps in weekly income, perhaps we have um, three of the ten cases are for £280 and three of the ten cases are also for £290. Therefore we have two modes that are occurring most frequently. Multimodal distributions are where there are more than two modes in a distribution, so where we have potentially several different pronounced views or patterns of response. So maybe in, uh, in an income data set maybe you have three particular modes of distribution, one at a very low end, one somewhere in the middle, and one somewhere very high up. We are going to have a look at distributions and what distributions actually physically look like in this sixth lecture of this series. Now, as discussed in lecture two, in our lecture on data types, it's really important to get to know what type of variable you're dealing with. So whether it is nominal, ordinal, interval or, or ratio, so what level of measurement it pertains to. And that is because it has a real influence on how we go about analyzing, analyzing our data. Now nominal variables or categorical data is data that comprises of categories but cannot be ranked in order. So each category is just different. Therefore, you can't actually measure the distance between each uh, between any of those values. So, for example, a nominal variable could be gender. Um, you may have two answers to that, which would be male and female. You can't measure any distance between the value of male and the value of female. They have absolutely no mathematical qualities. If they've got no mathematical qualities, you cannot use the median and you cannot use the mean. Both the mean and the median require you to be able to have some form of mathematical measurement. Or you can say, in the case of a nominal variable, is how often a particular value occurs and which of those values occurs most frequently, i.e. the mode. Ordinal variables, they are the next hierarchical level up from nominal data and like nominal data, the data is based on categories. But the difference here is that they can be ranked and ordered. So for example from good to bad or from agree to disagree. Therefore the same measure of mode can be used of course but with the addition of being able to use the median. So that is the middle occurring value or category. Up from ordinal data in the hierarchy is interval or ratio data or what we commonly call scale data. In addition to the ability to be ranked, as with ordinal data, the distance between each value within interval and ratio data can also be measured, i.e. the difference between, say, 1.5 metres and 1.6 metres. Therefore, interval and ratio data can use all of those that ordinal data can use to show both the mode and the median, but it can also use, in addition to those, the mean. The mean requires actual mathematical values to calculate an average. So scale data is the only variable type that can, that can provide a single mathematical value for each observation. So having had a look at our measures of distribution and having now just had a look at measures of central tendency, the final example of univariate analysis that we're going to have a look at is measures of dispersion and we're going to cover that in the next lecture.